Okay, hi there, and welcome to a micro video where we're going to evaluate some of the benefits and costs of economies of scale. I sent my students an essay question last week. Here it is. Evaluate the extent to which firms can achieve and benefit from economies of scale and consider the likely impact on consumer welfare. Well, there's a lot in here. Let's see what we can talk about. I think in terms of the significance of economies of scale for businesses, uh, cutting those unit costs, bringing down the unit cost of production is important, particularly in becoming more price competitive, both in domestic and international markets. One of the key evaluation points could well be that the extent to which there are scale economies will vary by sector. And a concept that's well worth discovering and thinking about is the minimum efficient scale relative to the size of the market. In this kind of essay question, it's very useful to use analysis diagrams, particularly to show the impact of economies of scale on price, uh, on output and profits. Firms can typically make higher profits, even if their prices are also falling. Uh, again, in this kind of question, examiners are looking for really good applied examples, choosing firms, choosing industries where there are economies of scale to be exploited. For example, digital services. Uh, typically, the big players, such as Facebook and Instagram, WhatsApp, etc., they enjoy large increasing returns to scale. If you think about software development, the, the development costs are pretty high. Uh, computer games would be a good example. But there are very low marginal costs once the software is written and sold or when extra users are added to a network. Lots of business in, in businesses in consumer services use economies of scale. Good examples, hotel chains, uh, big uh, coffee shop chains, the food retailing industry, where they can bring together a very complex but beneficial mix of purchasing economies, marketing, savings, managerial and technical internal economies of scale. And another good example is manufacturing. Uh, I've given the example of food processing, which brings together lots of very expensive big units of capital, so capital intensive production and scale economies in getting products to market and logistics and in funding their operations, financial economies. So look to find some good applied examples from your reading, whether it's manufacturing baked beans at low unit cost or the economies of scale in a fast growing digital business such as Airbnb. Primark, of course, has achieved big increases in market share on the back of economies of scale in retailing. Premier Inn is the UK's largest hotel chain. All of these businesses, all of these products can achieve economies of scale. So what are the key potential benefits for businesses from scale economies? One, of course, is that the average cost of production goes down in the long run. and That, we can show, leads to increased profits, which leads to higher returns on capital and a rise in producer surplus. Hopefully a concept you're familiar with. Economies of scale uh, through higher profits can have a positive impact on a company's share price and therefore their ability to raise finance. Those extra profits can be retained and perhaps reinvested at a lower cost of capital than going to the bank and taking out a loan. And businesses that are scaled uh, are perhaps less vulnerable to a hostile takeover bid. So there's a greater sense of security. Uh, we mentioned analysis diagrams. Here's two approaches. One is to use a, a simpler supply and demand analysis. If you haven't yet come on to cost of revenue curve theory, don't worry, you will be able to do that in, in the future. So here's a market diagram showing the initial equilibrium output of Q1, prices B, and you can bring welfare into your discussion. So consumer surplus before it comes of scale is the area ABC, and producer surplus is BCF. Add the two together, you get economic welfare. Well, one approach is to say that scale economies bring down the, the marginal cost or the supply cost of production from S1 to S2. And that allows a lower price, price falls to D, output rise to Q2. There's an increase in consumer surplus to ADE and producer surplus DEG. So an increase in consumer and producer welfare it can be shown using that diagram. You might want to go towards a cost and revenue curve analysis. I've drawn here a diagram showing a constant marginal and average cost just for simplification. It just takes out some of the curves. And here's the original profit, maximi profit maximizing price of Q1, uh, price of B, 
um, the consumer services area A, B, C, and the profit for the firm uh, is the area B, C, E, D. With scale economies, the unit cost comes down. So we shift in the new marginal cost curve, much lower with big unit cost reduction there. And uh, as a result, the profit maximizing output goes up to Q2. The price can fall to H from B. And there's a bigger increase, a significant increase in consumer surplus. It's now AGH. And the total profit of the firm is higher, even though they're selling at a lower price. The total profit is now HGIF. Well, these are ways that you can use analysis diagrams to show some of the benefits of economies of scale to both consumers and producers. What about the benefits to consumers? What about the demand side benefits to people buying goods and services? I suppose the obvious point to make would be if, if consumer surplus, sorry, if prices fall, if the unit cost going down leads to lower prices, that leads to higher real incomes and increased consumer surplus. My, my emphasis would be on the impact on the affordability of goods and services, particularly for households on below average incomes. If you can make that connection between the commas of scale and distribution, that's quite important. Uh, producer surplus has value. It can be reinvested in capital spending, perhaps reinvested in research and development. And that in turn over, over time might lead to improvements in dynamic efficiency, be it in cheaper food, in better in new drugs, etc., which, which again has a potential consumer benefit. Many consumers, of course, are workers, they're employees. So if profits and wages are going up in real terms, perhaps businesses have a, a share ownership scheme which could have a, a spillover benefit to consumers. And also there are consumer benefits from so-called network externalities or network economies of scale. So if you're using a, a hotel listing platform like booking.com or something, Travellers might benefit from more hotels being listed to give you more choice. If you're using a digital platform such as Google Maps, uh, the more users who join the network and share their data, then the more accurate the information and real-time information becomes. There might be some positive externalities from the scale of a network increasing. There are some of the benefits to consumers. However, you need to evaluate. And this, I think, is where the answer becomes more complex, more nuanced, more uncertain. So you can challenge and question the extent to which economies of scale actually lead to falling prices. Uh, indeed, if economies of scale reinforce or grow the market power of a business, that could allow in the long term dominant firms to lift their prices, perhaps using complex algorithms. Also, this is a great chance to bring in another aspect of the, of the subject, the environmental impact of things like mass production. So anytime when you bring in distribution, you're going to get some credit. Anytime you bring in uh, externalities and social costs and benefits, that's also going to be great for your answer. Lots of concern at the moment about low priced but fast fashion, the throwaway society. Mass produced fashion, very low price, low cost, but increasingly leads to waste. We're concerned about the, the carbon emissions from the transport sector, perhaps the growth of low cost airlines and social costs of that and increasingly as our smartphones become cheaper and more ubiquitous what about the e-waste from the use of and the disposable disposable of smartphones creating negative externalities and also ask the question is price always the main metric for measuring consumer welfare uh, price is important so we can show that in the diagram but product characteristics are also important so challenge the extent to which economies of scale actually improve service quality and the pace of innovation these are all kind of questions you can consider. My main takeaway point would be that the examiners are looking for good supporting examples. Evidence and examples helps bind an answer together. If you're looking at the market for smart speakers, such as Amazon Echo, for example, Amazon Alexa, for example, you know, the extent to which scale economies helps consumers in that market. Can economies of scale bring down the cost of electric cars? Can, crucially, can internal scale economies bring down the cost and the price of renewable energy. What about the sort of things we eat on a daily basis, the consumer products in the supermarkets? To what extent do scale economies benefit us there in the long term? Look to find some great applied examples. Okay, thank you.